So before we start, I noticed these oysters are bigger. So what what determine the size of an oyster? Uh, the, an oyster size is how long it's in the water, oh. essentially. So a lot of people are under the misconception that um, you know, like a oyster from a certain place is bigger, but that's not the case. It's really, it can be the case. So oyster growth depends on a few things. The temperature of the water, um, mostly, um, and how long it's in. So when oysters are from, you know, further up north, the water is colder and they grow a lot slower. So you'll see Canadian oysters might take two, three years to become market size. Oh, okay. Whereas where they're here or down south, within a year, they're ready to go. Um, so you have your different seeds, different types of oysters, so they all have their different flavor characteristics. So these oysters, um, they're actually, I think these are our great gun oysters, and we use these um, because they have more surface area for cooking. So when they're broiled, mm -hmm. um, we put a bit more toppings. You can double up. So see here, you'll see we'll do a Parmesan. Um, we can do another Parmesan for them. Parmesan. Yep. Uh, we have our bourbon chili chipotle. We have pesto. We have our Jamaican jerk. Ooh. And then maybe we'll maybe do double on the Jamaican jerk as well. So these are just some of our flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. We also have a pizza um, and maybe a bruschetta, sorry. Bruschetta. So we can show something different there. Um, so this is also homemade as well. Everything freshly chopped. Okay. Um, so we do this. These are all our preps. We put them in the broiler. For uh, how long? Um, about for a minute, about a minute 30, a minute, minute, minute 30. Yeah, so about a minute or a minute 30. Uh, so you can pop it in. Count a minute, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be ready to take some broiled oyster. I don't think I had it broiled. I had it raw. I had it fried. Yeah. But never tried broiled. All right. Well, today, today will be the day. Yeah. You can let me know what you think. Wait. So we also, as I mentioned, fry oysters. So we pre-prep um, our oysters, uh, soaked in buttermilk, and then our own um, handmade spices recipe. Uh, so we have Chef Rob here pulling that out. We're prepping them here to go into the fryer. Um, so we have them there. We cook them for a few minutes, crisp to perfection. And this is a this is a new concept that you guys just launched. And yes. how is it going so far with the is it popular? Is the you know, yeah. Yeah, they do love it. I think it, it brings about a, a whole new audience. Mm -hmm. um, particularly in the northeast you don't get a lot of fried oysters um, in many restaurants. Mm -hmm. Uh, so a lot of people have been able to try it for the first time. Also, some people who don't love the texture of just a raw oyster. It's not for everybody. Um, they really enjoy the fried element of it um, because it gives them a nice crunch. Um, and I think when you fry anything, people enjoy it. <laughs> but but um, it's also, we take our time. We have probably at least 10 different spices in our mixture. We soak uh, the oysters in buttermilk to prep them and make sure they're nice and succulent and have a lot of flavor. Um, so that also adds to it. We don't just fry, make sure it tastes good too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and anything fried tastes better, so. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm, I'm partial to yeah. the raw. Um, but again, a different flavor profiles are for different people. So yeah. um, we try to give a lot of options here so people can enjoy it as many ways as possible. And they're coming out of the fryer right now. So oh, you'll see golden. there, we have our golden fried oysters. He's prepped to make a po' boy. So we have <laughs> this one's extra pickles. We also like typically put um, uh, tomato on there. This customer didn't want tomato, so we're prepping a sandwich with no tomato, but we have different options there. And what kind of um, pickle? Is it like salty, sweet? Yeah, so right now they're kosher dill, and we're gonna start making our own B&B pickles very soon. And we're putting on top there a homemade garlic aioli. Mm. Um, yeah. So there, it's a toasted. That is the po' boy option. Again, we, uh, to a degree, have it your way. So you can also add tomatoes on there. We have a sriracha aioli um, and other different flavorings that people might request. Sometimes they want peppers, etc. So we can can dress it as we see fit. You can have it your way. All right. Four Wheel Fist is not just about traveling and eating, but we also learn about the culture and the food we're eating. What's in it? What is the health benefit? I 
learn a lot being in the oyster lovers truck. I learn about oysters and how oysters work and how it grows. That is not just based like, oh, we have baby oyster, mama and papa, but the size is based on like the water temperature. So this was a great, amazing time with the oyster lover truck. I learned so much and my palate changed for oysters when I first tried the oyster because I had a hard time chewing and swallowing oysters, but now I enjoy it. I enjoy the different style, the delicacy of oysters. So thank you to the Oyster Lover Truck and you can find them anywhere in Long Island. And if you follow Four Wheel Feast, you'll learn more about food trucks, you'll learn more about food, and you'll learn more about oysters. So today we're gonna try broil oysters. We have different type here and let's try the Parmesan. And this is broiled, fresh, from the Oyster Lovers truck. Enjoy! <laughs> 